Welcome to Community Education Scramble Game Show. I'm your host, Ife Chang. In this program, you have watched many uh, shows that are related to education, music programs, sports programs. Today, we have a bunch of uh, real distinguished people talking about the science research program. And science research program is very important uh, in high school. And many schools now have these programs. So in the following hour or two, we will uh, bring these guests to our show and let them talk about this program and how important it is to students, to schools, and to parents. So let me uh, first uh, make a quick introduction. We have four people now on the first hour. We have two teachers from Somers High School, uh, Greg Horace and William Melia. And we have two uh, happen to be uh, medical doctors. They are on the research program and so-called foundation. The foundation, of course, by definition, is supporting this program. And their names are Dr. Marisa Montecalvo <laughs> and uh, Dr. Warren Rosenblum. So let me start with uh, Dr. Rosenblum. Let them introduce a little bit about themselves. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Dr. Chang. Yeah. Um, I am uh, a cardiologist that uh, has been involved with the science uh, research program at Somers High School as a uh, founding member and uh, president of the Somers High School uh, Science Research Foundation. And our goal is to uh, promote uh, science research with our high school students and uh, facilitate uh, obtaining mentors for them to uh, learn how to uh, perform science research. Good. Marissa? I'm Marissa Montecalvo. I'm an infectious diseases physician and a member of the Science Research Foundation. And we uh, came together to provide support for the science research program that would include support in research activities and support in finding mentors and uh, coordinating students with science research projects that are available in Westchester County and in the nearby area. Good. My name is William Melia, and I'm a science research teacher at Somers High School. Uh, I'm in my fifth year now, going in, and uh, I teach alongside Gregory Horace. Greg? My name is Greg Horace. Um, I'm a science research teacher at Somers, as has been said. Um, I've been teaching science research for 15 years now at Somers High School. Very well. Well, uh, let's make this form, format very uh, sort of casual or informal uh, so that uh, you know, we don't have to uh, sort of a guard on discussions. But the main purpose is to let our audience know why science research program is important and uh, why parents need to pay attention to it. And of course, certainly the students need to uh, know about this program. So shall we start from uh, Greg? You, you know, introduced the science uh, program sort of as a general background? Sure. The science research program at Somers High School is a three-year program. Uh, students enter as sophomores. And the goal of the program is to have the students present in the Intel Science Research Competition, among others. There are about five or six different competitions that the Somers students do enter in. Um, essentially, in the first year of the program, we teach kids research skills. Um, we help them find mentors and teach them a little bit of scientific background in the area they're interested in studying. Um, hopefully, in the summer between their sophomore and junior year, they can get into a laboratory and begin to collect some data. Um, during the junior year, sometimes they present their research and sometimes it takes them to the senior year. Uh, the nice thing about the program is it's pretty open-ended, so sometimes students present two times, sometimes they present one time. Um, I think it's really a, a good program for students to be involved in because it gives them a taste of what real science is. It's really an authentic science research course. Right. So th this uh, particular science program right now has this foundation supporting it, 
And is this foundation just recently started? Uh, maybe you Warren, you expand yeah, on that? We uh, created it about a year ago. It was uh, uh, Mr. Harris uh, kind of reached out to the parents of uh, some of the children that were uh, participating to get their as their assistance in whatever way we can to create uh, a, a way for the students to uh, accomplish their goals easier. Um, my personal um, desire to participate was based out of the fact that when I was in high school, I performed science research. This is almost 30 years ago. I had an opportunity um, after my, um, in, in 10th grade, to uh, work in a, in a research lab in my high school at that time uh, had a research program. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do in life at that time, and I, it was something to do over the summer. And I spent uh, uh, that summer doing research um, in, um, at uh, Long Island University in the biology department, and, and uh, which then progressed to, to me continuing for the next uh, several years uh, in, in other labs also. Um, and it was an experience that really shaped my, my career today. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to pay it forward, if you will, and, and give back by trying to assist the program. You know, back in 1975 when I participated, our high school had a program set up where they offered uh, different mentors uh, to, to the students and uh, to choose from different topics to work mm -hmm. on, and uh, I was lucky enough to have that opportunity. Um, in Somers, it's been particularly challenging because uh, where I went to high school was in New York City, so I had ac easier access to some of these facilities. And in Somers, it's been a little bit of a challenge for the students to find mentors because of the distance. And what we wanted to do was to kind of allow them to uh, be able to find mentors uh, as, as, as least stressful as possible. And Mr. Harris, uh, you know, has been very good with the students and having them research topics and contact mentors on our own. But it's a very stressful uh, process. And for some of the students, it's very difficult for them to find mentors. So we still wanted them to go through that process of trying to find mentors on their own. But we also wanted to facilitate it f so the students would continue to be interested and not feel like if they can't find a mentor on their own, then they can't participate. So in the process, we've been trying to build up a uh, kind of a reference list of, of uh, men potential mentors for the students uh, and to give them ideas and be able to still contact these men potential mentors and, and hopefully allow them to make it the process a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are, st myself and Dr. Montecalvo and others that participate in the foundation have contacts in, in academia and medicine, and clinical medicine and, and whatnot. And uh, we are trying to reach out to potential mentors uh, that uh, would, might be interested in participating. Uh, it's purely voluntary. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be within the confines of the Somers area. It could be right. um, in New York City. It could be uh, out of state, out of country even. We've had uh, students that have participated in research using uh, with mentors uh, that are far away and been very successful. Um, and uh, we're hoping that with the foundation's assistance, there'll be more and more children interested in participating, more students interested in participating, and hopefully recruit more uh, mentors and also more people to help with the foundation. Right, so the, the mentor is, is certainly a challenge to the research program. And uh, uh, have you uh, uh, sort of created some methods or tools or any way to induce people to join us or how we uh, go about you know, recruiting them. Yeah, well, we want to try and, uh, I mean, this is one format where we're trying to get the word out. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to contact all the uh, parents and, and friends of people uh, that are in the school district and in the town of Somers, because there's, you know, that's an invaluable resource of potential people that are, are in academics or doing uh, you know, commercial research or clinical research and uh, trying to get the word out to, to see if they uh, be willing right. to help out and participate. So, so. In, in, in this process, uh, uh, of course, this is a one format, but you also have format that go through your uh, website and other means to reach out. Is, is there something that, uh, uh, Bill, you're doing? Well, this year we designed a uh, science research website. 
mm -hmm. um, where we have put up information for potential mentors and also students coming into the course to kind mm -hmm. of see the layout of their three years in the course. Yeah. Um, we've sent out links through emails through could, the. Could you first tell us the uh, the link uh, of that oh, of website? Of course, it's, it's yeah, www. Maybe put on the graphics. <laughs> of course, it's www.somersciencesearch.com. Okay. Um, we sent out an email to the parents of the school district. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a link to the website in there. Um, we've had some interest. We've had people find our, um, we've had thousands of hits on the website in the past year. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to tell how many of them are students and how many of them are potential mentors, but we have gained maybe two or three mentors this past school year That's excellent. Um, out of our communications through email blasts out to the district. Yeah. So uh, on the website, besides that sort of uh, uh, information for uh, attracting mentors, how do you uh, present sort of the, the content or the meat of your program? Is you do that through your website? Well, we have the syllabus on the website, so both students and mentors who kind of want to get a better idea of the program and what's involved in it, they can look at the three-year outline to see what students are going to be expected to do their sophomore, junior, and senior years. Um, it also has a list of what would be expected of a mentor during those three years. You know, we want mentors to have a clear understanding of what their role would be. We don't want them to feel like it's going to be 24-7, you're hiring a high school student to work in your lab with you. Um, so we outline that, you know, you're there for, you know, moral support to answer questions that a student may have in their research to potentially if you have the ability to let the student work in the lab with you uh, wherever you may be doing your research mm -hmm. um, but that's all outlined very good yeah uh, anywhere of you uh, is mentor yourself are you a mentor to a student I am not a mentor to a student oh. uh, but I uh, one of my roles has been in trying to find mentors. Mm -hmm. I, in my work as an infectious disease physician, clinical research is a part of our work. Right, I on was imagining that it may be a good area for yeah, research. And uh, so what I started with just thinking about my own connections within the medical school. I'm affiliated with New York Medical College and found that they had a very good program for students, that there were other high school students attending, mm -hmm. uh, and also students of various levels. Mm -hmm. And one of the things when you start thinking about research projects and looking for mentors, and you start doing those networks, is that you, you start to uncover all kinds of opportunities. And I think that's what we're, what we're trying to expand on. Uh, we have found uh, individuals who we knew who in fact have opportunities for students and even have some structured programs that we didn't even know about. So, so that is what we're trying to develop. Uh, being a mentor is uh, a responsibility for the for the mentor as well as for the student. Mm -hmm. It is a time commitment. The student needs to have some clear thoughts about mm -hmm. what they're interested in and, uh, and needs to be able to make uh, a time commitment. And so that re really requires uh, a, a broad base of potential mentors right, and projects right. because there are people, there are students who can drive and students who can't drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so the uh, really it's, it's the expansion of that network and finding research programs that are in progress and how a high school student with similar interests might be able right. to This is very good. I, I think uh, properly we should back up a little bit is uh, uh, maybe uh, Greg you can tell us is exactly the process for a student to engage in this program since it's three years or the entire high school sort of uh, tenure. Uh, if, if that process is described in detail 
perhaps uh, parents would certainly have a good idea of it, and the student would have a better understanding. And the mentors also know what kind of a, a commitment time involvement is, is uh, so taking place, whether it's you know, from beginning and middle and so on. So maybe, you know, Greg, you can go through that process as detailed as you want to. Well, I'm actually going to do it, I think, backwards in that, um, you know, the goal of the program is to have kids enter their research in science competitions. Good. Okay. And the science competitions have a number of different categories in which can, kids can do their research, whether it's chemistry or mathematics or computers mm -hmm. or behavioral science. Mm -hmm. And, you know, s some research projects are more involved than others in that some will require, you know, laboratories with sophisticated equipment. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we've had students who've been winners at international competitions who literally did their work in the basement at their house or mm -hmm. did the work in the high school itself. And so um, you know, it's, it's a very open-ended process. And so you know, our role as instructors of the course in the high school is to keep this in mind. And so when a kid walks in the door, in the beginning of the school year, one of the first questions that we ask is, well, what are you interested in studying? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And some kids come in the door definitely knowing what they want. Other kids don't know at all. And so we spend a certain period of time in the beginning of the year having kids research different areas if they're uncertain to get an idea of what they want to do and try and get them to find that one thing that really is their passion. And then once they identify that topic, then we begin to have them start to read scientific journal articles so they can become familiar with research techniques, uh, research content, vocabulary, um, getting to know who some of the people in the field who are doing the work. And so, you know, that's where the mentor piece comes in, in that we have them first just start to read the work and actually make contact with the mentor and ask questions they have in an attempt to design an experiment. Um, you know, something I think that's uh, at least always been fascinating to me as a science teacher is most of the novel discoveries in science have been made by young people who don't know any better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times when you're an older person, you know, you say, oh, this can't be done. The young person says, why not? And so a lot of times they come up with some pretty neat ideas. And so, um, you know, it's, it's very open-ended, which I love. And yeah. so essentially, you know, in the first year we support kids by helping them find journal articles, helping them find mentors. Again, that's where the um, foundation comes in. Yeah. So, so uh, as I heard you saying this, uh, I gather there are two types of students. One are fairly motivated knows what they want and perhaps some other are not and of course the program uh, want to encourage uh, more people to uh, participate so uh, how are you going to do sort of induce or introduce okay this program to uh, students even before they enter high school do we have any sort of procedure or things to uh, follow well, we usually try to reach out to the freshmen when they come into the high school. Mm -hmm. We go into the freshman biology classes and we talk about the program and we say, you know, some of you may have a question. You may have identified a problem that you're interested in. You know, you should consider this class because you, that may give you the opportunity to research that problem. Other students, you know, they may just really like science. They can't think of a specific problem or they don't know, I want to study you know, medicine, or I want to study computers. They may just say, I like science. Mm -hmm. And when they come in, that's really where uh, Greg and I come in as really coaches for these kids, where we try to say, you know, do some reading of some just general scientific articles and see what interests you. You know, look at some medical papers and see if that interests you. Or, you know, maybe you'll read it and say, that doesn't interest me. And so we spend a really good portion of the first year for those kids who don't necessarily know what they want, mm -hmm. helping them try to find something that kind of lights that fire in them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, they start looking for a mentor and start to develop their research. Yeah, yeah. But isn't it from foundation point of view, you, you actually try to even reach out to students before they enter high school because, you know, all these uh, sort of um, the interest is is sort of a 
cultivated sometimes in very early days could be elementary school. So uh, are we doing something through the foundation to you know, introduce this program and uh, really in the beginning, even the kindergarten level? Yeah, we're, we're trying to find opportunities at the middle school and, and the other schools in the district to be able to have an opportunity to speak to the parents uh, of potential st students that uh, haven't uh, reached high school yet and uh, make them aware of the program um, for two reasons. One, to get students interested in the program and also for potential mentors, not just the parents of those children, but perhaps relatives or friends or I might know somebody that is, a, is in academics and is doing right. research and might be willing to participate. Um, the, 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 the nice thing about being a mentor is that they shouldn't feel that that this is a burden. This isn't uh, a student that's just spending a summer in my lab and is going to clean glassware, uh, <laughs> or if they're doing bench work. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a three-year commitment. I want to make that very clear. It's a three-year three-year commitment for them to learn the scientific method and process. Mm -hmm. um, and the you know the reward would be to enter uh, science competitions. Um, but just the the fact that they're going to learn about science and research and what it's about will make will be invaluable to them. So we, we do want to capture um, the the children that are coming into the high school as freshmen, but we also have every intention to talk to our middle school and, and lower grades uh, to make them aware. And, uh, as I said, both to not only capture students but also to capture potential mentors. Right. Well, how how do you? Uh, reach out, say, uh, to parents. Are you, you, you're a parent. You have a, a ch child in this program? You yes, yes, right? I have. How, how do you three, th actually. <laughs> <laughs> Two that will be oh, seniors yeah. and one that is coming in for the first year as a mm -hmm. sophomore and the first of his three years. Uh, so your question was, how do you reach out? Yeah, how do you get course? even you know, parents to be uh, uh, either informed or uh, you know, uh, sort of encouraged to encourage their ki the kids to uh, enter the program. Well, in, in terms of um, informing parents, right? I think we've done several things really through the high school and mm -hmm. through methods of communication through the district. But we want to expand on that, yep. and in mm -hmm. fact, that's why we're here. Right. Uh, because that is very important. The parents of younger students, students who are not in high school yet, mm -hmm. we, we really want them to understand what the science research program is, really to uh, begin thinking who they might know mm -hmm. that we could then reach out to and see whether these people might have opportunities for potential mentors. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned before that you know there are students who might be more motivated and less motivated and how do you mm -hmm. reach out, but when you mention that I wanted to uh, say that sometimes the most highly motivated student might have a project that that can't get off the ground mm -hmm. because of the lack of an appropriate mentor. Right, that's certainly and that certainly true. That is yeah. very, very important. So, if if you're interested in kidney disease, or mm -hmm. you're interested in um, in a psychological issue, it, it it's a little difficult sometimes to find both someone who is has that interest. And research, capable of um, yeah, mentoring. Has the time to take on a mentor because many, many of these researchers are supervising uh, medical students, graduate students, students, uh, college students, students at all different levels of education. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, the logistics have to work. Right, mm. yeah. Yes. The student has to be able to communicate and get there or not get there. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we we want to encourage younger students to begin thinking about this, but we also want the parents of younger students to understand the program and uh, and what it offers, uh, and to think about who they know, who they work with, who 
potentially might be someone that we could reach out to as we build a foundation of projects that are in our community. Uh, so that, that I, I was told that uh, driving in a, in a slightly different direction is that um, sometimes the parents uh, and, and children may not have the same sort of uh, interests. For example, parents are, are not professional in science or you know, mm -hmm. technology mm -hmm. or so on. And therefore, they are not sort of tuned in in, in this kind of process themselves, uh, yet their kids could be potentially, you know, uh, you know great science student and, uh, and potentially a, a great scientist. Now, I, how do we sort of catch that? That's where I'm, yeah. you know, concerned is, yeah. uh, let's say a high school has thousands of students and, uh, you know, that many parents. Uh, what is the process we, we really make sure we cast the net out broad enough that, uh, you know, we, we really get all these good students in? If I can comment sure, uh, on that, um, whether your parent is a scientist or not is, is irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah. The Somer School District, I think, has a very strong science program. Mm. And we, we do a good job teaching science. We have a very good lab program. Mm. And for the students who are interested in science, um, they are encouraged by their science teachers to continue in science in whatever aspect that they right. that may be but all of the teachers middle school high school are very aware of the science research program and they constantly encourage kids to take the program the guidance department continually encourages students to take the program um, you know the program has grown essentially from four students to now we have 54 students Mm -hmm. and it's continuing to grow. Um, I was in school today doing preparation work and a young lady walked in the door and she told me she was signing up for the course and so you know you were talking about sometimes how do we advertise the program. Mm -hmm. um, despite our best efforts to advertise and we do a lot at different levels of trying to say the science research program exists in the district, parents, students, they miss it but through word of mouth within the school, kids find out about mm -hmm. the program mm -hmm. and they come in. Um, I have a number of students who come in the course not just as sophomores, they come in sometimes as juniors. Yeah. Um, I've got a kid this year coming in as a senior. Um, I had a student come in a couple of years ago as a senior who went to Intel with, or uh, not to Intel, but to ICEF with her research. And mm -hmm. so, you know, three years makes it a lot easier this young lady worked herself to death but you know people do come in late the school district is very good about encouraging kids at any time to come into the program mm -hmm. and so um, there's a lot of support from the school district that way so i, I so want to just you, mention you that. mentioned intel a couple of times uh, is that a strong motivator uh, for uh, sort of students to engage in this kind of program to participate uh, participate in competition or to win something is that the main driver? I think everyone likes to win if they can, but <laughs> I, I think that, <laughs> you know, the, the, I, I don't feel that um, winning a competition is what drives the kid when they walk in the door mm -hmm. as a sophomore. I think curiosity, love of science, um, something different, I mean, you know, one of the things that I tell kids in school is, is science research is not a course with a textbook. You know, some kids are very good at opening a book to page 79 and answering questions 1 through 10. But this course isn't like that at all because mm -hmm. what I want to know is well, what do you want to do? What are you interested in? And so a kid has to have that intrinsic motivation when they walk in the door, at least the intellectual curiosity. Mm -hmm. And if that's there, then we can hook them. And there is in high school this community of kids who participate in science research where they get to know each other because at the competitions they're next to each other for hours presenting their research mm -hmm. and they hear each other's work and it's it's kind of neat to watch that scientific community of high school students start to grow yeah, so they and so I think that uh, that's I think that's really more important to the uh, kids uh, initially I, I'd just like to say one thing yeah uh, you know the the, the creation of the Science Research Foundation wasn't out of the need uh, 
because this program was struggling. Yeah. It was the opposite. Right. It's, it's, th it's thriving. <laughs> yeah. um, and the, so you the need, need for the foundation is to be able to uh, accommodate all the students with mentors. Right. Um, as Mr. Harris said, his program has been growing, growing almost yeah. exponentially uh, each year, mm -hmm. and it's, it's an extremely popular program. I think that all the students are aware, whether they choose to participate or not, are aware that we have a science research program that's been very successful. We've had recent uh, uh, great success in, in some of the competitions uh, in the past couple of years. Um, and so it's becoming even more popular. And that's where the foundation came the from, is, is it grew out of really that. Really provide the support that, of that students. support, exactly. It is overwhelming. Exactly. <laughs> the <laughs> teachers. You know, yeah. yeah, so, so mm -hmm. I think that's, that's you know, what we're focusing on in terms of getting the word out. Right, right. Good. Yeah. That's, a ve that's a very good point. Uh, you know, uh, students enter the program, of course, we don't want to disappoint them, right? So this support and everything is, is trying to provide the best environment best yeah. to support uh, to mm -hmm. them. Now this competition uh, wise, they must serve a purpose in a way of uh, uh, whether it's a, a gauge of measurement, you know, how students can uh, handle research, present research, uh, you know, and uh, enter a uh, inner course of, uh, of discussion and so on. Uh, I assume uh, we have local level, state level and so on. These are useful, right? It's even though we're not saying that's the ultimate goal, but it's certainly it's part of the process. Every student who enters the research course is required to participate to, pre to present their research at a competition. Mm -hmm. um, we are fortunate enough in Westchester County to have the Westlake Science Fair, mm -hmm. which is a sophomore only or first year student competition. Right. And every student in the Somers Research Program is required.